Hi everyone. Sometimes it's not so easy to dimension what you would like to dimension in Revit. Consider the building, the floor that is shown over here, where you have some concentric circles. Maybe you have some other room in here that you would just like to get a sort of a a distance between this wall and that wall and this wall and that wall. So and you've got the walls that are existing I've drawn a reference plan and I've drawn a grid line so let's just see how they behave quickly this is on a sheet and inside of that there's a view level one it's this view over here <coughs> and so let's just have a look at this what dimensions can we try and use we've got an aligned dimension um, I'm going to switch on the line thickness over here so we can see any dots that show up so let's tab try and tab to these elements there it kind of doesn't pick it up right how about over here does it pick it up not really okay so how do we dimension along this line from one point to the other the linear dimension is not going to work either the angular dimension there's nothing here that we can use to dimension that element what other options do we have? We can draw an annotation line, uh, draw a detail line, but of what type? Okay, we can draw central line, demolish hidden, hidden lines, and so on and so forth. Sure, we can put them in a, uh, you know, let's just draw one of these lines here to there. But now they show up in the drawing. So, how is it that we can sort of hide this there's no invisible line here that we can choose to make them invisible uh, we can maybe set the color to be white so that it shows white on a on a background send it to the back but it's quite a lot of work to do just to dimension what you would like to dimension because now of course you can go with the align dimension you can find the end point of that line from there to here finally we've got that dimension okay. and then one could maybe hide that in view by elements there goes the dimension okay so as soon as you hide that it hides the dimension as well so what is there to do uh, let's try the the grid line oh yeah all right does that help us go with the align dimension over here tab 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 that's a no go and over here tab 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 that's a no go <coughs> all right so you might say in that case why don't we go with the radial dimension now let's try the radial dimension let's go onto the inner surface over there and choose that surface okay place that select it yeah, that's as much as we can do with that so we can have multiple radial dimensions so you can see our Revit wasn't really built around radial dimensions it's not intuitive as to go about dimensioning exactly what you would like with most other dimensions it's great um, what will it do with the aligned dimension if we go with the entire wall instead of in individual let's do entire walls it doesn't even want to select the curved walls okay so curved walls are a bit of an issue for it what workaround do we have okay so unless we want to spend a very long time trying to figure this out or to dimension this we might decide okay look we've got maybe AutoCAD uh, if we've got an AEC collection or if we have the Revit Alti suite we've got AutoCAD Alti so why don't we export this view into AutoCAD and import that AutoCAD back into this view so let's have a look at that can we do that All right so let's export that file export CAD DWG I'm going to choose to go next
and I'm going to save that right there, just as it is. Alright, so I've exported a 2D CAD from the Revit, <coughs> and in preparation, I've got an AutoCAD file which I call DIM Level 1. Um, <coughs> And in this file I've got a annotative dimension style. There's the annotative dimension style that I am going to use is come on annotative. And if I look at the definition of this, I've just modified it so that it's got uh, text that is 2.5 millimeters, the symbols and shown to look like um, you know, we can use uh, oblique, kind of looks like architectural lines. The text itself, if we look at the style, the standard style, we can set that annotative to aerial, it's annotative. So that's okay. And that's okay. Offset from dim line, text placement 0 0.65. Oh go with one why not and so <coughs> that's what it's going to look like the decimal separator I think in the primary units we can go with uh, the period and the precision and we can round off to 10 okay something like that then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the layers that we've got, we've only got zero and dev points and let's bring in and uh, attach the file from our Revit export quickly before we do that let's just have a look at our settings for our drawing utilities under the unit the insertion scale is set to millimeters and so that's going to be good all right let's attach that file we don't scale anything we can input the insertion point at zero 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 and we make it into an attachment so that it doesn't travel with the drawing if we extract it into something else. We go OK. So what that leaves us with is an import into Revit. Now I know that my scale in Revit is going to be minus 200. So what I do over here with the annotative objects is I say All right, automatically attach the scale that I change it out to. So there's one is to 100, we want one is to 200. Okay, so I'm going to add that scale as well in my options. There I can add the scale one is to 200. Um, there's the default scale, it's under the user preferences, default scale list. I'm going to add uh, one as to 200, where one paper unit is equal to 200 drawing units. And now I can, s I can switch out into uh, 1 is to 200, it should show up here. Uh, it's not showing up, add 1 is to 200. Okay. There's one is to 200. There we go. And as soon as we do this, and we then start annotating using the annotated dimension style, we can then choose to do, say, an align dimension. Use a snap override from anywhere to perpendicular. And place it. Right. Well, that's quite a simple um, method in AutoCAD, or let's suppose just a sort of a general midpoint to midpoint between one wall and the other sort of dimension over there. We can use the shift override mid between two points. So that's the middle between those two points. 
and mid between two points there and there so really quite simple to do these sorts of dimensions in AutoCAD and we just like them to appear in Revit so that's what we do I'm going to create a new layer over here I'm just going to call that Dim AutoCAD Dim AutoCAD Okay, and then make those into that layer as well Dim AutoCAD <coughs> that way I can um, identify them within Revit of course I could also use the American naming nomenclature that you find over here uh, but if I had anos it will be A anno but um, in this case just to demonstrate and um, then save I'm going to unload the xref and you can see the dimensions stay behind and then I'm going to file save at any time I can reload that xref remember just right click on that and I say reload I can reload the latest export from um, Revit to carry on with what I was busy with before and then if I'm back in Revit I go insert link CAD and this time around I'm just going to link in the dim level one remember that's the AutoCAD drawing I'm going to say the current view only I'm going to preserve the colors the layers I'm going to I can select all but I can also specify um, I can auto detect I can say it's millimeters origin to origin it's perfect I open and then I can say I only want dim AutoCAD to come in okay there we go and there I can see is my dimensions the only other thing to do over here is to say right I want the dimensions to show on top so I change the draw layer of background to foreground and that will show the dimension layers on top now there is a slight um, problem with this which one can probably live with and that is if you look at um, a radial dimension uh, let's just have a look at the, so both of these are aerial fonts but you can see how they don't display quite exactly the same they're both intended to be 2.4 but the one is a bit thicker than the other but that is not such a such a terrible thing I think one can live with it and then lastly in the visibility graphics overrides remember at any time you can also override the import um, and you can change the pattern or the color and the line thickness as well so the line weight so typically dimensions are on one you say OK and OK and there we can see we can override what they look like and it's a process that can be managed so every time that you add a new uh, room over here then you would just carry on and export to DWG again choose exactly the same name overwrite the file that's there go back into AutoCAD go to your XREFs and reload and there you can see immediately you've got your update on what has been exported or imported you can also choose to exclude the CAD export from uh, exporting your existing um, dimensions over there so if you're in Revit um, and you do go and you want to export so visibility graphics overwrite there's your imported categories uh, you can switch them off like that very quickly and then export CAD DWG next uncheck export views on sheets of external references and we want to overwrite that file yes go back to AutoCAD and let's just quickly uh, reload this and then we can see 
those red dimensions and are not exported back into AutoCAD. And again the process is very similar. Exactly the same again when I carry on dimensioning. There's an aligned dimension. I'm just going to choose midpoint to midpoint. And save this file. And unload. Make it simple. Save. Ex import and derivative again. And this time, all we need to do we go to our insert menu, we manage our links. There's my CAD links. And I reload. If you're on the cloud, you might need to reload from. And then remember to switch back on Invisible Graphics, the CAD imports. Let's reload from quickly. Manage links, CAD format, reload from. If you don't see the updates, then just reload from. Okay. Uh, of course, our current layer is zero. It must be in the right layer. Let's do that again. Manage links, CAD formats, reload. And then we can see how it comes in. All right, so you can do dimensioning in AutoCAD and then link that back into Revit. I hope that helps you in a, in a pickle if you've got um, AutoCAD available to you. There's a nice interplay. Just shows you how well the two pieces of software work together uh, when you've got AutoCAD software. They, they, they really make the workflow quite easy. Till next time, enjoy your AutoCAD software.